Hey guys, I'm here today with a process video for Colorcast Designs and for the monthly series that I do with my friend Susanna Lee called Sketch It Up, Sketch It Down. Here is the sketch that Susanna made for us this month. Isn't that awesome? And I actually printed this out 12 by 12 on my wide format printer so that I can cut each section as a template. Uh, bear with me, normally when I do my process videos, I edit and do voiceovers within a few days of doing the layout. This one, I made the layout and edited the video about two weeks ago, and I just didn't do the voiceover. So I might stumble describing the process a bit more than usual. I'm scrapping a travel photo of myself in London in the tube, which I absolutely adore traveling on. <laughs> And I printed my photo at 12 inches wide. It is about eight inches tall, maybe a little bit more than that. And right now I had cut the template up and I'm just marking roughly where to go because I want to make sure I don't cut my head off, but I also don't want to keep much of that dead space at the bottom. I pulled out these really big foam thickers. I looked and looked to see what they are. I don't seem to have the tag for them and I couldn't find them online. So I'm sorry about that. I don't know. I knew they American Crafts and they're probably three or four years old. And I'm spelling the word wanderlust, which actually I happen to love that word. <laughs> I know some people get tired of seeing it everywhere and I thought about using a cut file but I use cut files a lot and I really need to use up all these old thickers so I spilled that out and then I pulled it off to the side and I also went off camera and cut my sections I cut the two side sections and then once I decided where they were going to be placed I just sliced the top and bottom of the top and bottom sections I didn't do anything like cut those into triangles. I wanted the side triangles to overlap and then I'm going to ruffle them up and I didn't want to have any blank spaces where all the sections meet. And now I'm starting to adhere things down. Did I say the photo was about eight inches high? It's not. It's actually just under six inches high. So that means the top piece is just over six inches. So they're just about half half. But what's wonderful about this design is it's not going to be, say, the hourglass shape that I recently saw Scrappy Like a Fox, Tracy Fox do on her trend watch. This one, the triangles are off-centered, and I just love the look of this, how it gives it a little bit more movement, a little bit more interest. I add a little bit of my roller adhesive and then it's time to put the letters on. I pulled out my T-square ruler. That really comes in handy when you're trying to line things up. Now, I prefer the foam thickers because they are pliable. I just love the texture of them, but they are kind of hard to keep straight. So I do my best. I'm not trying to be super duper strict about it, but I'm trying to keep it from going too wonky. At some point before I put the letters down, I pulled a whole bunch of travel ephemera out that I might want to use, mainly from Ali Edwards' travel kit from last year, and a few of the sets from the Colorcast Designs May release, which is really what prompted me to, to do this layout. Here I'm ruffling up the edges. I feel like I can't make a layout without ruffling up the edges on things. <laughs> and I'm going to rip some a little bit so that I can uh, pull them apart and do some stapling later. The first idea for decorating was to put some things along the diagonal lines. And I was going to do an acrylic, but it wasn't going to show up too well on that background. So you see I have like a circular element there that I created. It was bigger than the pad from the Ali Edwards kit. I thought I could do it as a semicircle. But... I was also feeling like the colors were not going to work out. There wasn't enough contrast. So I went off camera and cut another piece of paper. By the way, I should tell you, the top piece that looks like the tube map, that's from Dear Lizzie's Saturday line. And the two side pieces are from Chamel. That darker one I just put down is from the Starshine collection. 
and the one on the right is from the Go Now Go collection. So now I'm putting down the title back on. And when I had the other paper, the title was overlapping the top piece of paper quite a bit more. I felt like there wasn't enough contrast there. That's why I switched out the papers. I needed the darker to contrast with the white. So I'm moving it down from my original location and I have to fiddle with it a, few, a little bit. Let's fast forward and voila, they're down. So here I go ripping some of the paper. I had picked a little label and it was dark blue. Since now my background is dark blue, I'm switching to a green. Uh, fast forward it again for some reason. Out of all the acrylics in the Colorcast Designs May release, I decided the Rome fit my theme best, the colorway best, and it just fit the space that I wanted to put it on best. So you can see that I'm smoothing things around, trying them out in different places. I've even pulled some other chipboard from Studio Calico and just trying a whole bunch of things out because I decided that lining the ephemera up along the diagonals wasn't going to fit the vision well. Design-wise, if I put acrylics along the edges of the triangles, it would call attention away from the title. There would just be you competing. But the sketch calls for some sort of element at that bottom right of that triangle piece and on the bottom left. A triangle piece too. So I needed to find something. I was really struggling before when I was trying to use circles and semicircles. What really was the breakthrough for me was finding these triangular pieces from the Studio Calico. I'm not sure which set that came from. They add a repeat of the element of the papers and they overlap the line from the paper to the photo really well. It also gives you some symmetry because you have stuff on the left-hand side overlapping papers. On the right-hand side, there wasn't really anything there. And I like how they are pointing, really, at the train and also back towards the other side of the page where um, most of the stuff is. And then you saw me add the Rome acrylic right under the train. I like how it fits just the right width with the train and it fills in a really blank space. Uh, using the tiny attacher to, I've just been obsessed with adding little staples to things. So I added it to the this photo chipboard, the two triangle chipboards. Then I'm here stapling down some of the torn paper edges. I pull up different sections of the edges. I didn't like that part there. It was showing up some darker blue because then it competes with the dark blue on the other side. So. Stopped fiddling with that and I printed my journaling. It reads, ever since I first went on the London Underground, it was love. The pace is exhilarating. I love being able to hop on and off all around the city. It makes exploring London extra fun. My original thought was to put it in the middle of the photo. There's that dead space. I kind of wanted to cover people up and then I thought I'd fill up the other side with some other things but I don't know it was going to get too messy it was too close to the room so I decided to put all my journaling off to the left hand side if it fills the sketch suggestion of having an element on that side and I also like that it echoes the transparency from the room on that side to adhere the vellum I used my new favorite adhesive for vellum and that's the Ranger mini collage glue stick but let's fast forward through that we're catching the tail end of sticking that down and then I wanted to add some more little bits this is a very paper heavy layout and the focus is on the paper the big title the big photo I wanted to keep it that way but I add a few little elements I grabbed some enamel shapes from Doodlebug, Freckle Fawn, and Amy Tangerine and added arrow, a little triangle. I was considering a geotag, but it just stuck out like a sore thumb, so I'm going to take that out. 
I added another arrow over on the Rome side. It looks okay right now, but for some reason I decided I didn't like it. I wanted to keep Rome all by itself. And yeah, just kept fiddling with that and decided, no, I'm taking too much attention. It's getting messy. So took a couple back off. There's another little arrow over where the tab is at, next to the D. And I really wanted to have a geotag, so I decided to use one of the acrylics and I put it right underneath my journaling. You know, I just realized I didn't put a date, so I could move that geotag over and put a date there. Or maybe to bring over some more words, I can stamp it in the blank space on the triangle chipboard. Here we are with the close-ups coming up. Thanks for joining me for this month's Sketch It Up, Sketch It Down. This time I chose to do a 12 by 12, and I believe Susanna was doing an eight and a half by 11. So follow the link below to check out her video. I don't think I've mentioned in the past videos, we do have the sketches available. I'll hook you up below in the description with a link to my blog where you can get all the sketches and also a link to the Colorcast Designs shop and some tools and products that I used on this layout. Thanks everyone for stopping by and watching. I appreciate any thumbs up and comments and I love seeing new subscribers. I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you come join me next time.